Hi everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to terminate a shielded CAT7 patch cable using a standard RJ45 modular plug with a load bar. So to get started, cut your cable to the desired length and place a boot on the end of the cable before you do anything else. Now, don't forget this step or you'll have to cut the connector off at the end and start all over again if you realise it's missing. Next, measure 3cm of cable and use a stripping tool to remove the outer jacket and then snip off the ripcord. After this, reposition the stripping tool and remove the next jacket to expose the braided shielding underneath. Twist the shielding over on itself but don't cut it off as this will be used to ground the connector at the end. Next, separate out the four twisted pairs and remove the full shielding from around each set, snipping off the foil at the base. From here, straighten each wire out making sure not to get them mixed up and keep track of which pairs go together. After this, you need to arrange the wires into the correct order so they're ready to be inserted into the load bar. Now there are two different standards here, T568A and T568B. Normally the connectors will come with a small wiring diagram as reference, but if you're unsure, there are plenty of reference images on Google if you search for it. So the only difference between T568A and T568B is the configuration of the green and orange pairs, but it doesn't really matter which standard you use as long as you use the same variation at each end of the cable. With that said, if you're making cable or replacing a connector as part of a bigger network, then best to establish what standard is already in use so you can match it. I'm going to use T568B as it's quite widely used and all of my other cables are configured in this way. So that's orange and white, orange, green and white, blue, blue and white, green, brown and white, and brown. Now on a CAT7 cable you'll notice that all the striped cables are indeed white, but the same principle still apply. So the white cable which was paired with the orange cable when you unwrap the foil is indeed the orange and white cable, and so on and so forth. So get all the wires in the correct order and get them nice and straight and bunched together. From here, Snip the ends of the wires at a diagonal angle ready to be inserted into the load bar. Now, inserting the wires into the load bar can be a little fiddly, but that diagonal cut will really help at this stage. The configuration you're looking for is all the solid colours on the front row and the whites on the back row. Once the wires are all inserted, just double check they're all still in the correct order. Next, measure 1.2 to 1.5 centimetres to the top of the load bar and snip off any excess cable. From here, you can insert the cables into a modular RJ45 connector with the release facing away from you. Make sure to push all eight cables right into the very end of the connector and just double check that each one is sitting flush at the end and that they're all still in the correct order. Once you're happy, insert the connector into the crimping tool and squeeze tightly. This pushes each individual connector into each wire whilst also crimping the plug at the base. From here, take the braided shielding and wind it around the buckle of the connector ensuring there is sufficient contact to act as grounding. Once in place, use a pair of pliers to close up the buckle and then push the boot up and over the connector to complete the process. Do the same at the other end of the cable and then finally test using a cable tester to ensure everything is wired up correctly. When you turn the tester on, you should see a sequence of green lights running from 1 to 8 down the display indicating that everything is wired up correctly. If you see a different sequence of lights, then you've probably made a mistake somewhere. As we've made a shielded CAT7 cable today, you'll notice the G is lighting up as well, indicating that we've got a solid ground connection from the braided shielding we twisted around the base of the connector earlier. If you want to purchase any of the items I'm using in this video, then I'll leave the Amazon links in the description below so you can go and check those out. So I hope you found this video useful, if you did then please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.